I'm gonna get a shot for saying this. If you don't have a child, you're looked upon with pity. You're looked upon as not having something full. That doesn't mean there's anything wrong with me. I'm just different and we're all different with our own predisposition. If there is something which is making you unhappy, bringing a kid in the world, it is not going to make it easier because the kid is going to bring more, more stress, more responsibility, more everything. Welcome to the She Word, conversations that women rarely have, but really should. Now, again, I'm going to remind you guys that before we get going too far into the show, if you're watching us on YouTube, you're going to find a subscribe button under here somewhere. Make sure you hit that subscribe. It's free. And it also means that you get notified of every single show that we put out there. Also, if you're listening to this on Spotify, same thing. You've got a subscribe button. Make sure that you subscribe to this channel so that you can join us on all the great content that we're creating. Also, of course, we're on TikTok. We're also on Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn. Make sure that you like, follow, or subscribe us there because we have an amazing 2024 ahead of us. And one of those events that you want to make sure that you are involved in is the She Word Live, which is coming to the MCC on the 24th and 25th of May. Make sure you sign up, get on board with this, and join us for two days. The first day, the 24th, is dedicated to empowering women in the workplace. And the second day, the 25th, is dedicated to empowering women in the world. We have some of the best international speakers coming to this event to share their thoughts and encourage and inspire you. On top of that, we also have panel discussions. We will be having Q&A. We will be having get to, to meet people and to get involved. We have so much happening. So guys, make sure that you follow our socials, head towards where you can get yourself a ticket, sign up, get on board and join us on the 24th and 25th of May. Now, if you are a Patreon page subscriber and you're watching this before anybody else, I want to say a very special thank you to you because you are doing something amazing. Here on our Patreon page, anybody who subscribes is making change because 50% of our profits are donated to the Richmond Foundation to support women who need therapy or guidance or any kind of support to make change to their lives and be empowered. So we want to say a huge and amazing thank you to you. One show on the She Word that has really taken me surprise is a show that we aired five months ago, right bang in the middle of season three, and that is Women Child Free. It consists of three guests and myself in our 20s, 30s, and 40s discussing being child free, either by design or circumstance. The show has proven to be the most watched, most liked, most listened to, and most commented show of the entire three seasons of The She Word. I wanted to run a follow-up show to look into the hundreds of comments that we've had and to feedback and discuss this topic a little bit further. So I've invited back two of the guests from that fourth, first show. Helen, Helen Jolly, thank you hey. for coming back. Pleasure. It's really good to have you at the table here. You are also a very integral part of the She Word team. But you have a long-term relationship with Malta. You moved here many years ago. You're a former invest investment banker. You're a property developer and businesswoman. And you're here with the She Word talking about this topic again. Maria. Hello. Hello. Welcome back to you as well. Now, this topic was your suggestion probably about nine months ago. Yes, after the... The, the episode of the women who were um, talking about this experience of them giving birth. Exactly. Yes. And you said, Trudy, you need to talk about child-free. And I don't think either of us knew quite how massive this was no. going to be and how far-reaching it would be. But you're also involved in marketing for Eurosport. And of course, you're also a fashion guru, fashion stylist, and you're a content creator. So it's really good to have you back. Thank, Thank you so you. much, Maria, for being here. 
Stephanie, Sherry and Juice. Now, this is your first time on The She Word. Now, you state in your Insta profile that it all boils down to what you're passionate about. For me, it's diving, (laughs) traveling, and books. Three passions that I also share with you, Stephanie. That's great. (laughs) But you also have a full-time career as well. Uh, And so you are a very, very busy woman. But when I said, does anybody else have an opinion on being child-free? You jumped in and said, yes, I want to come and talk about this. (laughs) So I want to just pick up on some of the statistics that we had before. While deciding against having children is nothing new, the trend for owning a child-free label and discussing that choice is more openly being picked up and discussed. In England and Wales, in the UK, a 2020 YoGov study suggested that more than half of the British population, 35 to 44 year olds, who've never had kids are never planning on having kids. And there's a whole bunch of other statistics as well that we'll get to in just a minute. But before we delve into this whole topic, I just want to ask, what have I missed out on? You guys are veterans here on the She Word. Have I missed out on anything there in your introduction? No, I don't think so. Have I missed out on anything, Helen? No, we're good. We're all good because yeah, people yeah. know who you are by now. <laughs> so, exactly. so Stephanie, anything that I've missed out, what do you do for a living? Um, so I, I'm an academic. I'm a senior lecturer um, of English at the University of Malta Junior College. I obtained my doctorate in 2018 in education. And, and of course, then I ventured into other things and like, like diving in my free time. Um, so I involve myself in different um, projects, different contributions. I um, present both abroad and internationally at conferences on different areas in English literature and linguistics. And that's why I'm so busy. <laughs> I was going to say, this is one heck of a wow. busy woman, huh? <laughs> My goodness. So can I ask you, because these ladies have already shared their journeys and why they're sitting here at the child-free table. Can I ask you, was your child-free decision a purposeful decision? And if so, what is that based on? Just just without being too personal, yes. but you, you've said that you're child-free. Did you decide that you wanted to go down a child-free route? Um, I guess in a way, yes, because I knew from the very beginning when we got married, that we wanted to focus on certain things like career and travel. We agreed that it wouldn't be something if we didn't have children that would affect the marriage badly. And we knew that uh, some people become very um, uh, sad about not having children, you know, and said, well, if it happens, it happens. And uh, we were very happy with the way our lifestyle was going and along the way we we always felt there was something new coming up there are new territories new different ways of travel new um projects and and we were very fulfilled um and we still are so yeah i think it was quite <laughs> a deliberate decision um Brilliant. Well, I mean, this is kind of echoes the the conversation that we had on the show the last time Mm, because we were all talking about the fact, in my case, it wasn't a choice. But that said, my life has been extremely full and, like you, very busy. So, you know, there's you can posthumously decide that maybe child free would have been my route anyway. But it's where we're at, and we're all sitting around the table embracing this child free life. Now we're going to come to your journey in a few minutes, but before we get there, I want to ask these ladies, and this is kind of a little bit out of out of your sort of reach there, Stephanie. But you guys, this show went out. My God, and mm. it went nuts. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it went very viral, yes. and it has reached thousands and thousands of not just women, but men as well. Yes. So I want to ask you guys, first of all, to kind of give me uh, an impression of your feedback 
uh, from the first show that we talked about, Child Free. What, what was the feedback that people were giving you? Helen, what did people say? I, it was really, really positive. And as you say, it wasn't just women, it was men as well. Um, I had a number of men, and actually a lot of people in the UK contacted me, but men especially to say, actually, it's not just a women's issue, it's, it's a man's thing as well, but thank you for speaking to it. Uh, speaking about it, I had mothers contact me saying, thank you. We'd never thought about it from from Mm. that perspective. So it opened their eyes because um, as you'll remember, we were all very respectful and very, we paid a lot of homage, didn't we, to mothers. I think that was a theme that we all had in that show, that we're so grateful to our own mothers, but also like how people do it, how people have careers, do so much travel, have these amazing hobbies and still run a family yeah. and look after kids. So, no, super positive. And it's been absolutely, yeah, mind-blowing, the, the amount of positivity. Before I come to Maria, was there anything that anybody said that really stuck in your mind? Um, there was... Uh, there were there was two people actually, and both of them said a similar thing. Both of them said, "You said what we have wanted to say." Especially Maria's bit, <laughs> where it was like, "It's none of your business." <laughs> like that was yes. that was such a great reel. Should they both said, "You've wanted to say what we have always wanted to say," and now you've said it publicly. So thank you, because actually, it's meant people in their life have backed off yeah. and just. And she, one of them said, I never say to people with children, what made you decide to have children? But it's a very kind of a, an accepted question. Well, why haven't you got children? Why is it never the other way around? So I really loved that. And, and that it resonated with people was just, yeah, it was just really heartwarming. When we were sharing like the feedback afterwards, honestly, a lot of it made me like really emotional. <laughs> yes, actually. even me, I think. Yes, I think in my um, in my case, there was this particular girl at a party and she told me, you girls finally had to put the subject on the table. Mm. Like now you just gave us the golden card and we are allowed to speak up and say, hey, we don't want children. We can be child free. And she told me, you have the balls mm. to go because obviously like I... I, I got good feedback from a lot of women and a lot of men, but I also got bullied by someone online. Yes. And I was like, I blocked the person because I didn't want to um, put the bad vibe of one person. You know, I didn't want to have a bad air when I know that this podcast was really, really successful, you know, but literally this this guy was literally commenting on every post. I was leaving a comment. I was doing something and I was literally wanted to write back and say, you don't have to date me, dude. You don't need to date me, dude. Like, I, you know what I mean? Like, what? How? how is your bullying affecting? Like, what are you gaining from your bullying? How am I affecting you for not wanting to have kids? You know? Yeah, so, but you're always going to get trolls. I mean, you exactly. speak out about something that's a but little bit... But on the whole, I think it was an amazing... It, it was amazing with respect to feedback. And I think even some men were really happy that yeah. we discussed the subject because unfortunately, sometimes for men, we think it is easy to speak up that they mm-hmm. don't want children, but it is maybe much more um, controversial, you know, because they are men and sometimes they are judged more mm-hmm. if they don't want children, maybe when they are in a relationship. Yeah. And I that came out of our, our show and I was really... I mean, very unaware that it was a, an issue that affected, it, it really didn't sink into the fact that it affected men as well. And I would just at this point say, go back and see this show. It's extremely powerful. It's here on our channels. Watch it or listen to it because it's a, it, it's, really groundbreaking and this has surprised me and I'm going to come to you in a second Stephanie but it really surprises me when you've both said wow you know somebody said well now we can talk about it Mm -hmm. because it's I mean we're in 2024 for goodness sake (laughs) yeah and the statistics prove that this is not a new phenomenon this has been going on for a while that women have been choosing women and men have been choosing not to have children so I'm going to ask you Stephanie when you talk about this or do you get approached by family members or friends and say, well, you know, 
the clock's ticking. I mean, it's one of the things we talked about. Yeah. It, do, yes. do you get that? Or do you feel free enough just to turn around and say, none of your business? <laughs> well, um, it's a very delicate topic. And I used to get that a lot, especially when I got married in my 20s and in my 30s, you know, the the age of having a child. Um, like, when when is it your, like, it's soon your turn? And when are you thinking? Are you planning? And that kind of thing. And sometimes it would be subtle, sometimes it would be more direct, sometimes from family, sometimes from people who don't know me very well. And uh, this idea that if you don't have a child, you're looked upon with pity, you're looked upon as not having something uh, full or whatever. And I used to always try and navigate my way and saying, you know, I, I didn't, I don't think I had the kind of none of your business thing. And I tried to be very diplomatic about it um, because I, I used to feel I didn't want to offend them, even though maybe the question was a bit, um, you know, person and whatnot. And especially people, you know, who I meet regular, whatever. And and then at one point it started kind of, you know, very subtly they started getting the message that, listen, I, I'm not really interested in having children. I, I love, I have loads and loads of nephews and nieces and I love them to bits. Um, but um, I don't feel that it's for me because although I admire these women, as you were saying, who... Uh, juggle so many different things. I felt that I, I, if I had a child, I wanted to give myself a thousand percent to the mm. child. And What if you could start your journey over? Start here and start again there. That's how life works in a circular way. We understand the importance of circles and that's why you are at the heart of ours. Find your way to wellness with Browns. I was not expecting it was the one thing that came out of that first show was that we all sat around the table and said we're not doing this because we have so much respect yeah. for yes. motherhood and what we know it will take I mean Alex who who sat exactly where you're sitting was in her 20s mm. and said you know what I know how much that is going to take and I'm not signing up for it because unless I can do a, as good a job as my parents did with me I'm not in it. I'm not doing anything mm -hmm. less. And I think that's where you were saying about the, the respect. Yes. I'm going to start with kind of the last thing that I was going to say, because I actually got pulled up. I got pulled up and I got criticized and rightly so. And it comes back to something that you've all three have touched on in our opening five minutes. One of the comments said, and I'm bravely going to repeat this, loved the discussion, though the host was irritating. The way, <laughs> I know, I know. Wow. but I'm going to embrace this because it's not wrong. Irritating the way she would refer to the ladies as not having a family or their decision not to have a family. People without children do have a family. They have parents, siblings, cousins, nieces, nephews, friends, and neighbors who require time, money, and energy. What they don't have specifically is children. Just like parents still had a family prior to children. Now, I got this comment. This was on the, on the YouTube video. And I initially, my reaction was, he mm. called me irritating or whoever this person was called me irritating. And I, I kind of, like, oh, yeah. but you know what? They're not wrong. No. no. And it was a real wake up mm. call for me Sorry. as a, as a host to bear in mind what my language was that mm. I was using. And I, I'm really glad that this person, and I have no problem reading that out. And you know what? Sometimes, um, like I get the look, like, Listen, I want to, like, obviously me and my partner, we don't have kids. 
And um, sometimes I say, like, I don't, today, I don't want to stay late. Like, I really want to go and spend time with my family. Mm. And like, I have that look, like, yes, I, my partner is my family, you know? Yeah. It is like, you have that kind mm. of look that you're bringing up an excuse. But if someone with children says, I need to go and spend time with my family, it's acceptable. But mm. for me, who do not have children, it is not acceptable. I'm making a fuss out of it, you know? And sometimes that hurts because you know what they say when you have a problem, when you want to feel loved, you turn at your family. And that is my family. That is the person that I go home to and we, we eat together, we watch TV together. It's like when parents watch, do these things with their kids. Mm. We do them together. So yes, we are a family to each other, you know, we turn to each other. And some people, yes, they still look at you and they don't see it that you are going to, that you are a family because you are just the two of you. It was such a wake up call to me. And I think, you know, I've I've talked about this a lot that... Uh, I, I've said continually that the friends are the family you choose. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I've used that term family. And I'm pretty sure, Helen, that you would probably relate to this because we're, we're actually, I hate the term, but we're foreigners in this country. Uh -huh. So our biological family might not even be on this island. No. So in that context, the very fact that I've already cited the my friends as my family, and yet I would be reluctant to say that I have a family... And I spent a long time sort of examining this in myself. And here's my question. I actually felt shame in using the word family. I felt that that was, I've, it, it got me thinking that maybe I regarded myself as inferior to a woman who has had mm. children. Because I felt I, when I sat there and I read this comment, I thought, but if I use the word family, I feel like a fraud. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm married. I have a dog who is, I can tell you, demanding as much as a child <laughs> would be demanding. And my, my husband has a daughter who is amazing and incredible and I love her. They are my family. Mm -hmm. But I yeah. still feel, I don't know about you, Helen, I'm going to ask you before I come to Stephanie, I still feel that kind of mm, about using the word family. It's a funny use of the word because people say to me, if they don't know me, like, oh, do you have family here? And what they mean is children. So for, for example, like my parents come over here a lot. So when people are asking me over Christmas, do you have family here? I would say, yes, my parents are here. But what they, the question they were asking me was mm -hmm. different. They were asking me, do I have children here? So I think it's a common kind of interchangeable whether it should be interchangeable or not you know we're getting into semantics here but what I do want to say is that just be, I, th I think for all of us especially Steph just because we don't have our own biological children we are all not short of children in our lives be it a pet like honestly my parents substitute for children when they are here believe <laughs> believe, <laughs> believe me nice one mum and dad <laughs> and then my all my friend like I'm a I'm a godmother effectively to 12 kids so all my friends have Mm -hmm. have kids so I am not short of kids in my life so Same. please don't feel sorry <laughs> yeah, for me and me yeah too. exactly like we're we're not yeah we're not inferior we're just different and they actually love us a lot oh my god because we're yeah. fun because we turn up play <laughs> and then hand them wind them right up and then hand them back <laughs> you said that the last time so no one ever ever give <laughs> Helen your kids because she'll send them back sugared up but do you feel do you feel ever that you are maybe being a fraud by using the, the term, because you just hit the nail right on the head. When somebody asks you about your family, they're actually referring to, to children. Yeah. You know, have you got a family? Do you have family here? I mean, I do. I, I have a husband and I have, he has a daughter and I have a dog and I've got family and I would consider you guys as my family here in Malta. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I, even I, I, I'm really glad this person called me up and, and said it because it does give you that perception that if you don't have kids that you are some way inferior do you ever live with that do you I know we talked about this in the first show but I'm just going to ask again do you ever feel that inferiority I think for me personally I'm so happy with my decision that I don't feel inferior does that mean at times you don't feel lonely even with 
kind of all the friends and family and a hectic social life and travel and hobbies and, and, and everything else. And all the kids else. that you wind up. <laughs> and all the kids <laughs> that you wind up. Yeah. Uh, so no, not for me. I mean, I'm not saying other people don't view me as that, but quite frankly, like that's their, that's their issue. That's not my I business. I think um, there was a point where maybe I was um, not deliberately made to feel inferior, but um, it's like, um, well, despite all my successes and all my things, it didn't compare or it paled in significance having children. But I always consider having, like, my family, I have 10 nephews and nieces. So um, it's uh, it's always a question of juggling everyone. It's, it's amazing. I, when people outside um, my family ask me if, about family, I feel like, yes, okay, they're not my children, but I love them as though they're my children, and I would do anything for them. So there comes a point now where now I'm, tranquil I'm I'm settled and I think what this inferiority was being con- was, was connected possibly to one thing that some people used to tell, tell me oh you'll regret not having children you'll regret not having children and that kind of thing but that even the idea of having children just so that you don't regret it is not a good idea <laughs> not exactly. and and then I like nowadays so you ask me do I regret it now I'm even more decided that I I don't so when I was in my 30s, I would, I was partly afraid, but I knew deep down who I was. So, but I was a little bit like, you know, a few percentage of maybe I will regret it and, you know, growing older. But now, as I am now, I can't tell you what I'll be like in 10 years time. But right right now, I feel, no, I, I don't. I'm very, as Helen said, I'm very happy with my choices. Well, it's interesting you say that because one of the comments I really loved um, was from, uh, w- it was on the YouTube and it said, I'm 51 and I have not an ounce of regret for not having kids. And then in bold letters, zero. <laughs> I so just in that. case we were in any doubt, it was zero. Society needs to evolve and accept that there are women who have no desire to have kids. I have a strong mothering instinct, which is what we've just been talking about. All the negative ones like nagging, ho- hoovering, controlling, I think it's definitely uh has a genetic component because my grandmother abandoned my mum when she was two and her sister just a newborn. So clearly she didn't want to have kids. And here's my question. Are there, I mean, do we think that there are just some women that are just not programmed to have kids? And the reason I keep coming back to this is because when Alex was here, I mean, I'm assuming you mentioned your age. I mean, you look can I just say amazing? Thank but I'm you. assuming that you're sort of towards the end of your 30s or something around there. Yeah, I'm 42. Damn, she looks good. Yeah. Right? yeah. <laughs> We're all going to beat you up afterwards. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but you look amazing. But Alex was in her 20s and she came out and said outright, I am not programmed that way. I've never had that feeling. I've never felt that feeling. And are we just saying, you know, there are some women that are programmed to be sports women. There are some women that are programmed to, I don't know, give me an example, to travel or not travel. Or there's some people that can dive and there's some people that that would be the worst thing that they can imagine. Are there some women who are just not programmed to have children mentally, physically? Yes, I agree with that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, definitely. I always used to say, for me personally, and it's not, I'm not a scientist, so it's not technically correct. But I was you to say, I don't have that gene. I don't have yeah. that mm-hmm. wanting to be a mother gene. Not that it is a gene, but I just, that there's something, but I don't view it as missing. I don't mm-hmm. view it as a, something I'm defunct in or, or something that's kind of a lacking. Mm-hmm. I just don't have that. Like I'm never going to be an astronaut. I'm never going to want to be like my mum and a lot of my family were teachers. I'm never going to be a teacher because I just don't have the patience gene as well. <laughs> uh, which is maybe is why I don't want them to be a mother as well. But, but I don't, I don't have that, but that doesn't mean there's anything wrong with me. I'm just different. And we're all different with our own predispositions. I think like, I can feel it when I'm with someone, I with a, with certain women, and I can feel it. Wow, she will make a good mother, mm. you know. Like I take the example of me and my sister. Like me and my sister, whenever my mom was sick, she used to take care of us. She used to be our mom. Me, I'm I'm the oldest. 
I, I had no clue about that. Like, I care, but I had no clue how to take care of a family, you know, like like the whole family, dad, mom. Like, but she had it all figured out, you know. And now she's a mom. She doesn't panic. I mean, I look at her, I say, my God, she's so patient. I, I don't imagine myself being in her shoes. Why? Because she's delicate. She's de- it's she has a true mother instinct. But if I picture that myself in that situation, I don't even think my mom pictures me as a mom being a mom, you know, because she knows my character. Like I love freedom, I love being independent. I care. I care a lot. But I never had that calling, you know, like 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 I mentioned again, my sister, when we were young, she was always taking care of babies, pushchairs. I, I I was never in that in that kind of era, you know. So I think yes, some some women have different callings, and you know, from 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 the start that she, they have mother instinct mm-hmm. or not, you know. Yeah. So and it is nothing wrong if you don't have mother instinct. I mean, so funny because. Um, when uh, well, sometimes you know when you're out with your nephews and nieces and um, <laughs> and sometimes maybe you're you know for example with one particular niece uh, on my family side we're out together and some people look at us and we're very close and we're joking and they sometimes even assume that I'm the mother so because they tell me oh you you, you would do you would you know make a good mother and kind of thing so it's not that I don't have a mothering instinct because I discovered that I had it actually, funnily enough, when I started to have all these nephews and nieces. Um, but with the idea of then going the full hog, I call it. <laughs> from, have it in short periods. <laughs> from yeah. changing diapers to bedtime to feeding time to... Then I started overthinking about school, about all the homework, about all the things. And then pff, suddenly, okay, no, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> because, well, I mean, you, you've, you've nailed it on the head. It's oh. not a five-minute commitment. No. It's not, and there's the baby, the baby's cute. And, and then the woman always takes the burden of, I, I don't want to say anything against um, men, but I think if you look at, it's a... I was looking at a couple of articles about pronatalist societies, like... Mediterranean societies, we are one. We are a very pronatalist society, and also it's gender. So there is this idea that the woman takes the whole, you know, the, the burden of child rearing. If a, if a woman wants to keep the career going, and I know women, and for me, they are super women. I know women who have a career, have kids, and I always wonder how on earth do they manage to do it? Uh, part of me wish to do, to be like that, but I didn't feel I, 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 I could go that full. Well, it's interesting you say that because we have in this season, we have women and uh, as working mums and we also have women as stay-at-home mums. So we're giving women who are parents a lot of attention in season four. And one of the things that women as working mums said, you know, there's a whole baggage of guilt. There's a whole baggage of challenges that come with that. Mm-hmm. And we're just saying, you know what? We're not up for that. And I, I want to come back to this because there's another comment that ties in very well with what you just said there. Uh, the comment that came in from the show said, you absolutely can compare motherhood to a profession. Why? Because in all professions, including motherhood, motherhood, in order to perform your role competently and without causing damage, you must possess an inherent proclivity for it. Not every job is for every person. Parenthood is not the exception. Now, I want to ask how we feel about this because that would suggest, I mean, one of the things that we may have in a conversation that might be an undercurrent that I've heard before is that because you have a womb, because you're a woman and you are physically built for it, Mm -hmm. therefore, by not having children, you're actually taking that privilege for granted. Again, in my case, that isn't the case because my my ability to have children was long since many, many years ago was compromised, so I can't. But there is that whole idea that because you have a womb that you should have a child because otherwise you're doing a disservice to being a woman. But what this is saying is actually no, not every job is for every person. I think just because you can doesn't mean you should. And I say that in property developing, I say that in business, I say that in all types of things. 
And it's something, again, I think we've all said here, and I get the feeling that we're all, if we want to do something, we want to do it really well. Mm -hmm. I think that when someone brings up that argument of because you have a womb, you are losing the privilege. Well, we are all healthy. We are born healthy. Okay, some... So if you have health and you're not taking care of your health, you have a privilege, you're healthy, but you're not taking care of that. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I get you back, you know, Ooh. because some <laughs> people always want to put it back on the womb thing on the, okay, some women have wombs and have children, but they're not respecting themselves in terms of what they eating, how they are living, um, for example, smoking while they are pregnant. So that is that respect? Is that a privilege? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, it is not. So, uh, so sometimes when when people start saying eh, you're privileged because you're a woman, no, you, ev everything is a privilege in life. You just need to, you just want to choose which privilege you're gonna enjoy and indulge. Can I? I'm gonna ask a very. Leading question, and, and you don't have to answer this, but I can, as you were talking, I can remember a situation where there was a young lady, a young lady who had two children and for whom I questioned her motives. I thought to myself, I'm not entirely sure that you want to have children. I think you're having children because you want to trap that individual and you want, I mean, we all know these. Do we not yeah. all know these situations? Yeah. Yeah. And for me, that is abhorrent because you're bringing into the world a human being. And I think quite often the emphasis is put on women who don't have children and have the equipment to do so instead of saying, well, you know, actually, I'm going to say this out this and you can shoot me down, but there are some women who have children and you think to yourself, actually, that your motivations were not pure. Yeah. Am I, I'm not alone on this one. Absolutely not. Um, I mean, you hear conversations of women like, I want a kid because he has a kid from another woman. <clears throat> so like, hello, you're talking about a kid. You're not talking, you, you don't even bring a pet at home. Yeah, it's not but if you, don't, I, I, you, you know what I mean? And yes, I totally agree with you that some people have motives, motives for insurance, motives like, and this is not fair on the, on, on, on the kid at the end of the day because even like even when when some women have kids because their partner want to mm -hmm. that is not something that is going to arrange your marriage or fix your relationship that, yes. it, it it won't because if if there is something which is making you unhappy bringing a kid in the world it is not going to make it easier because the kid is going to bring more more stress more responsibility more everything so I'd rather just be humble to myself and be clear that I what I want from my life than trying to please everyone because after you have the kid, then there is something else which the other person wants to get pleased. So and a lot of sorry, a lot of couples when um sometimes couples they're going through a very difficult time. So they said maybe we have a kid to bring come together. And sometimes it works, sometimes they bring the kid does bring them together. But sometimes the demands of child rearing makes them drift apart. So having a child to save your marriage is never a good idea. Oh, I don't think anyone in the world, I mean, um, no psychologist in the world would say it's that. It's been around for many, 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 many mm -hmm. years, mm -hmm. many years. And, and even in literature and in film. And, and you were speaking before about the womb. And I mean, primordial example is, is Margaret Atwood's The Handmaid's Tale, which our students study at sixth mm. form about women being two-legged wombs and because of the whole patriarchal society of Gilead that forces women who are called handmaids, you know, so I think anyone should read that book and understand when, uh, you know, having a child is a, such a beautiful thing and it can be transformed into such a horrendous thing in, 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 a, in a patriarchal and 
authoritarian theocratic society. It's not because it's patriarchal only. But there are other, you know, there's so much literature about um, children, about positioning of children, positioning of motherhood. Uh, recently, I read a very powerful book called Stillborn. And it was about this, this woman who, who wanted to have a child and they, she was told that she was going to give birth to a stillborn child. And the child didn't turn out to be stillborn, but there were so many different problems and the struggles and the difficulties, um, you know, it, I always say it's uh, it's it's okay having a child, but then you have the rest of your life to take of the child. And one of the things that used to scare me and the idea of having a child was the possibility of illness and um, heartbreaking, you know, like mm. disabilities and that kind of thing. How are you going to cope with your life if you can't and save your own child, you know? I don't know about you, but sometimes I also think like when I see the environment, how it's turning on, the the wars around the world, and I am like saying, okay, if everyone thinks like me, no one has children. But okay. sometimes I come at and think like, do I really want to bring a child in this world yeah. where there is all this trouble? And some women actually came forward with this kind of thing that they are scared to have children because they are not sure about the future of our well. Let, let's surroundings. Face it, we're in the, at the moment. We're on a a precipice of the point of no return for this planet and it is one of the 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 decisions that i've made for myself would i if i could have had children would i have children i'm not sure if you if you i mean it's a it's a constant thought and we're sort of going off topic for a second but i don't understand because this is kind of my bugbear but i don't understand how those people that are making decisions for our planet that are detriment detrimental to our planet's health are able to live with themselves when they look at their children and their grandchildren in the eye knowing that they're destroying the planet for them exactly it's so the generations unfortunately it goes against the grain because we are programmed to only think about our existence they're not going to be thinking about what's happening exactly in the some some people cannot even have the decency to recycle but then they have the, de the decency to criticize you for not having children. Like, dude, you're not even taking care of the environment that your children and your grandchildren are going to be living in, mm -hmm. in 20 years time. Yeah. So like, and okay, they call me crazy and I don't care. You know, I, at this point, I don't even start give a shit anymore. <laughs> but you can is, say, you know, you can just say it, just come out <laughs> and say it. But it is the truth, you know, that if you're not even taking care of the environment, but you're criticizing people who do not want children, you have serious problems. <laughs> Such a contradiction, isn't it? I tell you what, the, the most, when I was talking about the episode with friends, the thing that people with children already said to me, they wouldn't change their choices that they've got now. They love their kids. Obviously, they do. They <laughs> said, but if I had the chance again, I wouldn't have them. Yes, I <gasps> Yes. I got that. I saw this, That yes. was the most <laughs> frequent comment I got from men and women. Yes. This true. leads me very nicely on to another comment. Love your podcast. Such good subjects. Thank you. There is respect from a mummy's side to child-free people. I am a mother, but I totally agree with not having children if people don't want to. Is no one? It's no one's business what one is doing with their life. The child is not made under society's pressure. It's such an intimate decision. This is a comment from a mum who's also saying, you know, it's nobody else's business. Yeah. It's absolutely nobody else's business. And it follows on from what you were saying. We've got more comments from mums as well, because I was very surprised about mums even wanting to watch the show. But I guess, you know, it's relevant because you've just said mums. Well, you know what? I'm just going to put this out there because having done so many shows on parenting, I have, as we said in the last season, so much respect yeah. for yes. mums. But can yes. I just say, and I'm saying it to every single mum who's listening or watching, Good grief, they have a hard job. Yes. Holy crap. I mean, seriously. Yes. I, I, watching or, or, or interviewing or taking hosting these shows is enough to put me off having had yeah. children yeah. if I was at that point where I could make a decision. They're everyday heroes, eh? Oh, yeah. Absolutely they are. Good mm -hmm. Lord above. It's hard work. And I always felt that, I don't know, I... 
I, I, if I, if I could come close to that, it would be great. But it wasn't for me. I think it wasn't a selfish decision. But I wanted to be, you know, if if, if then you have someone who is a that person is 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 a succeeding. If you don't, you consider yourself a failure. And I wanted to point out something about what you said on reasons. Um, dubious reasons for having children sometimes people tell you oh you don't have children so who's going to take care of you in old oh age <laughs> that is really selfish uh, to be fair because so said, no. you're <laughs> making children to take care of you there's no guarantee that someone is going to take care of you unless you maybe have a um a team of kids i suppose <laughs> because if you have one child the statistic is that if that child goes abroad and lives abroad you know um, there are families who have more than one, they have three, four children, but even then, th there are a lot who, who who are not even based in the same country anymore. So, Well, I mean, in fairness, I have two brothers, and, and last year, the, my brothers live much closer to my parents than I do. I didn't see much of my parents last year, for which I'm very sorry, but I saw more of them than my brothers. Oh. I mean, that's a girl-boy thing, I'm sure. And even now, my, my husband lives doesn't live in Malta, his parents, my in-laws live here. They're absolutely gorgeous, but he doesn't get to see them because he's out of the country. So it's no, there are no guarantees. It's not exactly. a pension plan. <laughs> it's not a pension plan. And quite frankly, what I hear more often than not is that children are wondering what they're going to inherit rather than what they're going to give back. Call me a skeptic. <laughs> but it's an it's an interesting point. But you said it's not it's not a pension plan. It's no, not. it's if you're having kids. So that's like. Sometimes I have these kind of things like when I grow old, am I going to end up alone? But that usually is in the week before my before my period comes. So I am over sensitive, you know, <laughs> <laughs> then, <laughs> then I come back to I come back, you know, to me and I'm like, OK, I was exaggerating that. But, you know what? There are pair. I think it is when I see parents who are sad because their children are not visiting them or being there. It is much more hurtful. Mm -hmm. If I don't have children, at least I'm not gonna feel that hurt that my children are not visiting me. You know? <laughs> yeah, you're not rejected. Now I'm yeah. feeling guilt. Yes. Okay. Um, you mentioned something, Maria, about loneliness, and uh, some people say, "Don't you feel alone?" Or uh, going home to an empty home, and they don't know that I'm in love with silence. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm sorry, but having your and husband <laughs> on your partner is not an empty home. Sometimes and, it is because you don't hear them that, and they're that, uh, that my one of the things my mother taught me is to love my own company and to be all okay on my own. And uh, now at my age, I'm cultivating good, solid friendships. So yes. why not? And there's your family. Yes. There it is right there. Helen yes. and I are just absolutely <laughs> peeing ourselves because you said I'm in love with I silence. And I'm like, go girlfriend, I'm with oh. you on that. <laughs> I wouldn't touch on this gender thing for a second I'm sorry I'm still <laughs> laughing because Helen is absolutely killing herself I want to touch on this gender thing for a second because one of the comments that came in men are never or rarely questioned of why they either don't have kids or don't want to have kids and I'm as I'm looking at the camera because I'm reading this back to the people that wrote the comments I'm seeing these these three heads nodding profusely uh, that in and it, of itself should tell you that this is a completely sexist issue. Is it a sexist issue? It, are, are men asked about this? Is your your other half, are they asked about not having kids? It, is your half? To ask, is your other half? To, to be fair, um, I have sometimes had these kind of comments when we're with friends who have children, like, now you're next. You're, and he says, we're not going to have kids. And I really appreciate the fact that he really stands up for the fact I, that he does not want kids because he doesn't w want to put the blame on me because it, we have been for long together now and he had seen it in people's eyes that I get the blame, Ooh. not him. Ooh. And he sees it. And That's when sexist. I speak to him, it's always me that it's, it's, it's you. you know, <laughs> because let's face it, if a man says no, and then he's 60, he's 70, and he wants kids, he can have kids. Mm -hmm. But if I say no, I mean, I'm in that period, I'm in my 30. So obviously, whenever I say that I, I'm not planning to have kids, I'm always reminded that my, my bio biological clock is ticking. And it is the best time of, the, of, of, my, of my years to have kids and, you know, charades and musicals, you know, and I'm like, no. But but when we discuss together, he sees it that 
uh, he get the blame. And I really appreciate the fact that when someone asks, he stands up for me. Like he yeah. doesn't allow me to reply, but he keeper. replies. And He's for a me, keeper. Huh? Yes. And for <laughs> me, you know what? That will make me think when he does that. This guy is the perfect guy to have kids with him. Even though we don't want to, mm -hmm. why? Because he stands up for you mm -hmm. in yeah. with some de in delicate subjects that you know not other men, not not mo many men do, you know. So, what about yourself? What about your? I have to think back to see if um, probably it's a discussion that I might ask him. You know, at one point, like did they ever be? Because when when we're together, I don't recall. It was mostly, I think, as Maria saying, assumed that that I would be the one who would want kids more, and then if I didn't want kids, then you know he would also not want kids. It, it there is a sexist element in in society, which is related to because women are the ones who bear the child physically, and therefore it is assumed sometimes, you know that they are the ones who, if they don't want to have kids, then poor guy, his wife doesn't oh, want to have kids. Yes. That kind I, of I, thing. I but I don't think what is that she doing they, with uh, her? I don't know if they asked him. I don't know who, if there was ever anyone who asked him on his own, mm. um, you know, when are you going to have kids or whatever. Guys are not going to tell us, like are not going to tell us these kind of things because they think they will hurt us, you know? Like... Um, Oh, well, I tell you something, my my husband, my now husband, when I first met him, he was trying to put the feelers out to find out whether I wanted to have kids. He kept saying, I'm, you know, we'd make great kids together, which absolutely scared the crap out of me. <laughs> and it was only after about two months, I'm like, "Hun, we need to have this conversation. There's no kids going to happen here. And he was like, oh, thank goodness. <laughs> I said, well, why didn't you just ask me? But it, we had this, this conversation yeah, in the yeah. first show. It's a difficult conversation to have. Mm. But this I idea. I don't think it is. <gasps> no, I don't think it is. If you're meeting with someone, you are dating someone, and you think that there is going to be a possibility of a relationship, you need to be straight with the person. You don't need to waste time, nothing. Mm -hmm. I mean, it yeah. is nothing to be shameful or like if someone shows shows you what their wishes are. I mean, that is, it's all about communication. I yeah. don't expect someone to be with me for a long time mm -hmm. and then one fine day. I mean, I'm. At my age, now I'm seeing couples who are getting, you know, separated because they didn't have the conversation and now they are married with home loans. And then when it came to, do you want kids now? And there is a disagreement. I don't want to end up like that. I'd rather uh -huh. be single alone for the rest of my life than getting heartbroken. Mm -hmm. Like, well, you know. Listen, I'm going to come to you, Helen, because we talked about this and I'm going to focus on Helen for a second because she's been quite uncharacteristically quiet but uh we had this conversation in the first show when is the right time to broach that subject between you and a new partner you and i are probably with all due respect past the point where that is a conversation you even need to think about it's normally just <laughs> where's the good wine uh but but where in your experience has that conversation come into play oh oh do it early i'm totally with maria on this do it early i mean not first date send them running for the hills early <laughs> maybe but it's good to but, get hints like, but, questionnaire <laughs> but exactly like there's um a relationship expert in the state alison armstrong i've studied loads of her stuff and she said if they're gonna run let them run early. So have these conversations. See if, you know, you are compatible on whatever level, kids, religion, lifestyle, travel, where you want to live even. Get all that stuff on the table yes. and work that out. Exactly. Save the pain. Do you want that pain at two months in or do you want the pain at two years in? Because the answer is going to be the same whether you have the conversation at two months or two mm. years. Run. Tell me that quote again, because I think that's really profound. If you're going to run, run now. If he's going to, if he's going to run, he's going to run early. Oh, yeah. Or, but, or even you, if he wants kids and that's not for yeah. you, exit. Exit stage right really, really quickly. Exactly. Save yourself it's the heartbreak. It's better like that than, because you mentioned pain. The more you are with a person, Yay. the more painful it will Yay. get. Because, and you mentioned something about being direct, you know. I think our generation... Um, and even older, there was a bit of a stigma around it. And because it was assumed that if you got married, you're going to have children. Yes. 
And nowadays, the, the generations coming up are much more direct and blunt, and they know what they want, mm -hmm. and they're not afraid. I think in us, there was this kind of fear um, that if we were going to broach a subject so delicate, so there was a point where it was still a bit stigmatized or taboo. Maybe now not so much, but it's also thanks to the generations coming up that are changing that, and also thanks to the women who are now more so um, becoming career-oriented, becoming more independent, learning that they can make their own decisions without being pressured by society, by their families. So it's also the way women are changing as well. wondering if you're listen if you're reading my questions <laughs> if in between me talking to these girls you're leaning over because I'm going to read another quote this is the last quote and I'm going to ask a question exactly on that the quote says I love this conversation and you ladies are incredibly refreshing to listen to I almost fell out of my chair when Helen said I almost feel like maybe I don't have the gene. I had the same thoughts about baby dolls and motherhood since I was a child. I waited for the desire for a baby to hit me, but it never did. I have felt alone in this perspective for so long, so I can't thank you enough for speaking on this. Now, you were just talking about the younger generations maybe are more outspoken, but I think this is a question I just want to throw onto the table and really thrash out. Why do you think that this show, Women Child Free, was such a hit? It wasn't just a hit with women who've chosen not to have children. It was a hit unanimously with parents, with men, with younger women, with older women. Why do you think this topic resonated with so many different people? I think for me, I think it's because we hit the strap line of the show on the head. Conversations that women rarely have, but really should. So yes, we might get asked, why don't you, why don't you want kids? Why aren't you having kids? There's, there's a question, but there's a question and there's an answer, or there's a question and you shut it down. There's never a conversation around it. And we went into the conversation, the why is the why is not, why not, all the different factors. We just, we rounded that question out you did um i think that social media plays a big part if you had done this show maybe five ten years ago you would have perhaps had more flack you would have different reactions i think i believe that you would have had um it was more stigmatized it was more uncomfortable but we have now become so exposed to uncomfortable things on social media that we're braver to kind of let's go to it you know let's get to it it's, uh, it's that's not a really interesting it's not point, desensitization. Yeah. Some people might read it as desensitization, that nothing is shocking anymore. But I think in that, there is a good thing that's, and this is not so shocking as it was before. Because women but, are changing. But, but this eh? shouldn't be a shocking conversation to anybody. But remember. We, we all chose, we all said in the first show that you, in our minds, you opt in to have children. You don't opt out. It's a given. You aren't born with children. You opt in. You make a conscious physical decision to get pregnant. Yes. To but have a family. Remember that as a girl, we are all girls. I don't think no one of none of none of us received a car when was our first toy. We all received a doll and a prem. I actually did get a car, but anyway. You did? Yeah. <laughs> you were lucky. Well I'm I got Lego. I got ham like ham <laughs> most of the girls are handed dolls to take mm. care of them mm. is their toy. So like you are being, you know, taught that you came into this world to take care of the another. You, yes, it is society, you know. I said conditioning, she says brainwash. 
Yes, mm. it's, it's like so I was said about Handmaid's Tale, and you know, Whoa. Can't that's, watch that, it too that's, scared. Yeah. that's extremist. Yeah. It is. It is the society that made us think that we are going to grow up and have babies. I mean, it's it, even in certain places of the world, women are still considered that they are the child bearers, you know, not not mm-hmm. not, not to have a career in, in remote places, but it is, and there are still some people even here in Malta, some men who still think that, and even women, unfortunately, who still think that women are there to give birth, to reproduce the, you know, like last time I was listening to this doctor and he said that they are having concerns because now that women are deciding not to have children Mm -hmm. it is going to affect the economy the workforce Mm -hmm. and everything it's also going to affect the planet exactly in a favorable way (laughs) i mean if you look at china china is extremely concerned about the birth rate at the moment because and trying to encourage women to have children because Mm -hmm. they're seeing that their population is stalling Mm -hmm. because more women are choosing not to but i come back to this question why does this topic resonate with so many people? You said because we've opened this uh, acceptance to be able to have these conversations, and I I hear that with, with every the decades stats... that passed from. So now we're in twenty twenty four. So with every decade that we we move away from the fifties and the sixties and even the seventies, where women had to give up their job in order to raise children it was even imposed by by governments where if you had a child you had to give up your job Mm. and then from the 80s onwards so the 90s and the 2000s we weren't further away yet to have this conversation now we're you know slowly inching forward into a world where it's almost going to become normalized Obviously, people would be afraid because of the economy, because we won't have kids, because children, you know, there wouldn't be uh, the, 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 the idea of legacy, the idea of continuing the species and whatever. But normalized. The stat says that certainly in the UK, that uh, half of the half of the British 35 to 40 four-year-olds who haven't had kids never plan on doing so it is being normalized it is being normalized and and yet we're sitting around a table saying that this is still a difficult conversation to have and we're still being asked why did you not choose not to have a catholic pro-natalist society Mm -hmm. agreed Agreed, however a lot of the comments also came from overseas and the response came overseas i'm not sure that this topic is i mean helen i'm going to ask you because you and i are probably um rep- what well, we are we're representing the foreigners but unfortunately i've been here for the last two decades so i understand that about the culture here in malta but i think for our experiences and your comments yeah and our and the comments on the youtube channel and spotify was stating that the response was phenomenal and it wasn't confined to Malta. And judging by the response, we aren't there yet. This is still a conversation that people are going, wow, someone finally yes. talked about this. Yeah. I think there I is mean, still stigma, what the heck? stigma yes. that people will think. I think there is, there is a stigma on women who, have, who do not have children, that there is something wrong with them. They are being questioned, you know. So like like I said in my previous podcast, like like um there was this girl who told me now people are gonna think that you are a bad seed because you don't have kids and your ex-partner have kids. I was like, seriously? People think that, you know? I mean, I don't even but when I heard that comment, it made me feel like seriously, people think that about me, you know, that I'm incapable. And sometimes um I think women hate to feel that they are incapable of having kids you know so it is a bit of a stigmatized topic and i'll be honest for me you know finding out uh, and through no fault of my own that i couldn't have children was actually a bit of a relief in some respects helen i want to come back to this thing about whether it's a, a maltese issue or is it a national issue you you spoke to many people in the uk yeah every time i go back to the uk every time i talk about it every time i share about it the feedback from the uk is exactly the same and as i say men and women and i don't think i had realized that it yeah like like the way it took off completely surprised me maybe because it's part of my everyday life but 
the feedback, yeah, from the UK was was just as thank you, thank you for talking about that, thank you for raising this topic, thank you for putting it out there, and I feel seen, I feel heard, mm-hmm. like I resonate. Yes. So it, it, it's a it's a much wider, even with the differences between the UK and a Malta, it's. It, yeah, this is bigger than just this island. Yes, I received a comment as well, like Helen. And also some people said, like, we want to have kids, but we haven't found our right partner yet. So we don't want to have kids just for the reason of, you know, our clock is ticking. Mm-hmm. So I like, there was this girl, she told me, I don't want every time, so, like every time someone asks me about kids, I am reminded that I haven't found my good partner yet Mm -hmm. and that hurts sometimes so but I don't want to just settle in to have kids I want someone that I can live with him all the for the rest of my life not just you know having kids and then we see you know that does come back to something that Stephanie was saying about so social constructs Mm -hmm. because I think perhaps as you were mentioning maybe back in the 50s post-war and the the decades that came after that that women may have I'm going to get a shot for saying this, but they may have settled for or set different sights on their long-term partners, maybe because they're not exposed to the traveling or the, the, the diversity that we now are exposed to. Yeah, the opportunities. The opportunities, uh, the opportunities yeah. yeah. So, so I think as well, maybe as Helen was saying, maybe Malta and the UK are similar in certain respects in terms of stigma because... A lot of the things we have here in Malta are modeled on the UK as well. And so we Sorry. share this commonality of the stigma, <laughs> you know. I always feel like I have to I apologize. Think, I think, yeah, I mean, look at all the things that we have that are from the language to the examinations. A lot of things are modeled on the UK. So even maybe the family, the way, the, even the concept of family, the linguistic connotations of family going back full circle, you know. Yeah. I, I wonder, I mean, that that's an interesting observation. I certainly, when I came to Malta 20 years ago, or nearly 20 years ago, one of the things that I observed was that the family unit here in Malta is far, far, far stronger than it is in the UK. Yeah. Yeah. Family relationships are, the bond is much... Because we're closer, maybe. Abs- <laughs> yes, physically yeah. closer. Yeah. But there's also the religious, mm. there's yeah, the Catholic yes. entity to that as well. And I think that, that has an awful lot to do with it. But definitely the family bonds are strong. And that's where your ironic situation between the patriarchal and matriarchal mm. society, because let's face it, women do have an awful lot of power here in Malta. They may not know it, but they've certainly run the home, which has mm. been the, the the kind of basis of society for millennia. Yeah. So I think it's a very complex yeah. issue. I'm going to kind of say I'm really glad that we came back and revisited this. I want to throw into the table your, your kind of takeaway thoughts from this topic that for these ladies who've visited this topic before and have had feedback and whatever you want to to throw into the table on top of this dirty cow chocolate <laughs> which nobody's eaten we're all going to wait until we there's the end of the show and then just yes. jump on it um but pop, pop some thoughts on top of that and i'm going to ask you stephanie from your viewpoint as well to throw some fresh thoughts on that but what was your biggest takeaway from the previous show and the aftermath of that I think I really felt happy that I was not alone in this, in this, like before I used to like be afraid that I am the only girl in the room who doesn't, who doesn't want to be a mom. But after this show, I was literally once this girl was looking at me, I was like, what did I do wrong? And she came, you're the girl from the podcast. I said, I don't want kids. I like you. Like, good show. And I was like, wow, lots of women I want to want to say this. Want to say, listen, it is none of your business. And yeah. the, and it, like you know, it, it became like a joke because whenever someone asks me, she said me, so you don't want kids, right? <laughs> <laughs> tell it, to, 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 sell it back, say it back. No, it's none of my business because obviously, um, I I really felt that we are like became a community of child-free women in Malta, to be honest. Because yes, I I I've been having feedback. People texting me on Instagram like, thank you for this show because you girls like um really outspoken 
spoke your thoughts and everything. So yes, I I think it's it, um, it's it's satisfactory to know that some women don't actually feel alone anymore after yeah. this show. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's a phenomenal takeaway. Mm. Yeah, yeah. But you mentioned the word community. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I one of the things I said in the first show, I was questioned. Um, when I was holding somebody else's baby, I was questioned because I was holding their child. Is it your child? No, it's not my child. Where is your child? I don't have any. Your poor mother. And it, it broke my heart. It absolutely broke my heart. This idea that it's acceptable and that there's a community of women who have made that choice and there's some sort of camaraderie. Helen, for you, your takeaway. I think it's something you said, but it very much ties into that. And I think, again, going back to why this this that episode blew up because I think some women do feel shame around that decision, even if it's not a conscious shame, even if it's an underlying, well, I feel like I have to justify myself, almost like an injected shame. And actually by shining literally the spotlight on this topic and us all going, well, actually we're really happy with our decisions and we have a great life mm -hmm. and we still mm -hmm. think mothers mm -hmm. are cool. Everybody else was able to go, oh yeah, Oh, me too. Like, that's how I feel. That's how I feel. And we like that spotlight, like blew away that shame. There is no shame. It's your decision. Own it. Like, it's no one else's decision. <laughs> Nearly swore. I, I know didn't. you want to say it. I know you want to say that. <laughs> Stephanie, you're new to the table and we're very, very glad that you've been with us to, for this episode. Your takeaway thoughts. Um, so both echoing the idea of not being alone in this discourse and the shame and whatever, but also th that after so many times and years of, not many, many years, because it didn't happen all, all the time, I was met with, oh, you don't have kids, you know. But sometimes, you know, I, I used to feel this thing, oh, I have to justify myself every time. It's very tiring. And now I feel a bit vindicated that I can be a bit more confident and say and I own my decision with a bit more you know this is who I am and I'm proud of who I am I'm deeply respectful of of mothers and people who I know are mothers friends and family members who are mothers but I shouldn't be ashamed for not being a mother for not having for having something missing because I feel fulfilled in other ways so yeah vindication and not need to justify my course of of life really what's the line when someone asks you, it is none of your business. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers to that, guys. Cheers. Cheers to another <laughs> great show. And thank you for having me. I love talking about this. We're done. That was excellent. Yay. Please eat the chocolate. Well done.